Welcome to Treasures and Truth with Tope. Um, everyone wants to feel happy, but this chaotic world is filled with pain, struggles, and challenges that can leave you feeling defeated. But the truth is there are treasures in your trials. But if you don't want to stay stuck or overwhelmed, you can tap into these treasures. I am Tope Kiku, um, and I interview, I interview guests, who bring inspirational stories and insightful and through insightful teachings to help you discover the treasures in your trials and to help you discover God's purpose for your everyday life. And today I have with me author, coach, speaker, Laurie Boruf. She is the co-director of the Christian Communicators and she is going to share with us today her story of, her God's story of hope and the treasures that she's found in her trials. So welcome, Laurie. It's good to have you joining me today. I am so happy to be with you, Tope. And I want to say congratulations on your podcast adventure that you are launching here. And uh, I just wish you the best. I know it will help so many women uh, just find that hope and healing and purpose and the treasures and the truth that they need to get through every day. So congratulations. Thank you, Laurie. Do you mind sharing with us uh, your God story and why hope is so important to you? I would love to do that because God has um, been so faithful to me in my um, storms of life. And the one that I would like to share with you is regarding my 18-year-old son who um, we had a knock at the door one night and it was a police officer there to arrest our son. Now, you know, that's, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. And I was really taken by surprise. I knew he'd been making bad decisions, but um, to have him arrested, to have him take handcuffed, taken away to jail and, you know, no idea. Of course, we couldn't contact him at that point and just no idea what he was going through or what was going to happen. Uh, he was charged with two class X felonies held on $200,000 bond, and we did not have the money to get him out. So he, we knew he was going to be in for a little while. And once he got sentenced, he was looking at seven to 14 years in prison. So I don't know about you, Tope, but that um, broke my mama's heart mm -hmm. when we see our kids make those choices and have those kind of consequences. You know, that night, I, and I was a praying mom. I guess God answered my prayer because at one point I said, Lord, do whatever it takes <laughs> to uh, get this kid's attention, to turn him closer to you. And I guess God took me seriously because my son was now in jail and God got his attention. He really did. But the night that they took him away, uh, I was devastated and I was a praying mom. I was part of a group called moms in touch. Uh, and at that time it was called moms in touch where I started prayer groups in schools. We prayed for schools. We started prayer groups in our homes, moms praying together for their kids. And, you know, uh, I will tell you, when they took him away, I said to God, I got honest and I just said, Lord, I don't know how to pray. I, I just right now don't know how to pray. I don't have any words. That was an awful feeling. I never thought I would say that. Yeah. Have you ever had a time when you've said that? I can totally relate. Uh, there are times when uh, when my son was, was um, going to college the first time. I struggled with letting go and it was, it was really hard, but uh, not, 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 uh, it was really hard to, to deal with that. But then leaning on the Lord, asking him for help uh, was, was how I got through that. So I can relate in that sense. Well, what happened next really um, took me by surprise. When I said, Lord, I don't know how to pray. I, uh, Immediately, the Holy Spirit 
dropped Deuteronomy 33.12 on my heart. And I had no idea what that was. And I really doubted that God knew what he was talking about because I wasn't sure what Deuteronomy uh, could tell me or make me what it, how it could make me feel better. Uh, I didn't even know how to spell it, but I grabbed my Bible, dug through and found Deuteronomy 33, 12. And the second part of that verse says, the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. The one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. Shoulders, And I knew that I was the one he loved. I knew he loved me and that all I had to do that night was just press in and rest between his shoulders. So that's what I did. And um, just kind of picture this, Tope, uh, pressing into his chest with one ear, pressing into his chest, hearing his heartbeat instead of my anxious heartbeat. And then I thought, okay, my other ear is open for him to speak truth to me. And I just felt like I could hear his whispers in my ear speaking truth. And I, I pictured his arms around me, holding me. And I knew at that time that I was embraced by hope, embraced by hope. And guess what happened? I slept like a baby. I slept like a baby that night. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, but, so, so that that is that is really a fascinating story. Here you are, your son's being taken to jail, um, and you it's it's a really serious situation. Uh, it's it's a hopeless situation, and you mentioned that you didn't even know what to pray, how to pray, but you leaned in. Um, and so I think the, the, the message for our listeners is storms are part of life. Right. Um, so either you're in one right now or you're just living one uh, or you're about to enter into one, uh, but storms are part of life. And what helped you was you had a relationship with the Lord before the storm. And so to get that passage from Deuteronomy 33, 12, um, that relationship prepared you to be able to tune in uh, to what he was saying. And so I think from hearing what you were saying, that you slept like a baby that night. I can only imagine uh, that, that you really rested. You took that word to heart and you rested between his shoulders. Wow. And that is such a good point, Toby, that you made that um, I had that relationship established before the storm. That I think that maybe that's the real treasure right here is that um, I had that relationship with, with the Lord through prayer, through reading his word, through worship, you know, just whatever. Because after all, it is a relationship with Jesus, right? Yes. It's a relationship and it's a conversation and it's um he's always there to to help us get through that storm he's always there and uh i needed him and he was there yes yeah yes that 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 is so true uh, that having that relationship beforehand is very helpful as we go through the storms so i would like to ask uh you to share with us a little bit about your son you shared how he went to jail uh, what is he doing now and could you and his ministry? Yeah, uh, God did something pretty amazing uh, when he was in cell 121, which he also has a book titled Cell 121. Mm -hmm. And um, he was uh, in jail and he, he listened to the men's story coming. They'd come in and they'd leave. They'd come back and it was just a revolving door. They'd been in and out of prison for most of their lives. And he's got, there's got to be a way. The Lord was tugging at his heart and he said, there's got to be a way um, to create a program where they don't have to come back. They can get out and be productive citizens. So while he was in there, uh, he wrote out a plan. He had hundreds of pieces of paper and he was writing out a plan for a program when he got out. And he said, Lord, whenever I'm out of here, if it's seven years, 14 years, whenever I'm out of here, I'm going to do this. Well, uh, it took him eight months to actually get sentenced. So after eight months, he was in front of the judge 
And they had said, um, Rusty, we, we've reduced the charges and you've served your time and you are free to go. So that was like, oh, wow. Yeah, whoa, nobody was, was next that. <laughs> no, but God was just, you know, he was, he just, I guess he needed this plan to take off and get going. So Rusty was released and immediately he started this program. Well, it started with $500, an old trailer, and one guy who was addicted to drugs. That's how it started. Today, uh, it's nationwide. It's a nation, nationally, let me just say it's a nationally known uh, outreach called 180. And it's a $4 million uh, ministry. They have a men's home, a women's home. They have, they're just doing amazing things. They're in the schools. And God has just put his favor all around the 180. So uh, it's just Such very exciting to see it. Story. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting to see it grow and change lives. And it doesn't only, only change the life of the person involved. We see families restored, marriages restored, relationships growing, and families coming back together. It, it just has a ripple effect. And um, wow, what a treasure chest of, of hope and redemption and restoration. And so, so here was your son. That situation looked really hopeless. And today the Lord did, brought him out of that situation. And I guess your prayer was answered. Uh, because while, you know, you prayed that the Lord should do whatever it took to go, get his attention. And while he was in prison, he saw the need, you know, yes. for, for uh, rehabilitating people who were going in and out of jail. And today he's able to minister uh, to, to those people. He's, he actually found his purpose and he mm-hmm. tapped into the treasures from his adversity. And today he's now using those treasures to help others. What an awesome story. You know, he was, he was always, uh, had a heart in school as a young kid, all the way through high school, he always had a heart for the underdog Mm -hmm. and he had to actually become the underdog to know how to reach them. Yeah. So God's at work. (laughs) We don't see it half of the time, but he's always at work and always has a plan. So if you're listening to this today and maybe your your son or your daughter is in a similar situation and you think maybe there's no hope, um, Laurie is telling us there is hope. This amazing story reminds us to lean in, to lean in. So Laurie, let me ask you this. Where do you see people struggling the most with their children? Well, this is what I discovered uh, in, in working with the women and the men in Rusty's program, I asked them, so they've all been in jail. They've all had some kind of addiction, just made bad decisions, gone the wrong way. So I said, when was the first time you went the wrong way? When was the very first time you took that drink? When was the very first time you stole something? Uh, And they'll always come, every one of them would say, when my grandma died, um, when my dad walked away, when mom and dad got divorced, when mom died, there was always some kind of loss. Every single person had some kind of loss in their life. Mm-hmm. So I just want to encourage parents to uh, pay attention to that. I know when Rusty started going the wrong direction in eighth grade, making bad decisions, doing stupid little stuff, but it had, they had consequences. Um, he had two friends die that year. And as a Christian, a Christian mother, we prayed together. We talked about it. We cried together. I did everything I knew how to do to help him walk through that grief, but it was still there. And it was in his, in that pain that he started acting out in, in, in ways that took him down the wrong road. So I just want to say that if, if you have a struggling a child struggling, um, ask them, when was the first time you felt like you needed to take a drink? When was the first time you felt so sad? 
or, you know, go to that very first time. And they may not know, but you can pray for your child to understand and for God to reveal that very first time in their life where that grief hit. It's some kind of loss. It doesn't have to be a death, some kind of loss in their life because they don't know how to, what to do with it, how to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I, that was a real big discovery. um, I think for me that grief is a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And, but as a parent, we miss it sometimes. How, how painful that is for a child. Yeah. I think even adults struggle uh, with grief and loss. And so I can only imagine how it is for children as well. Uh, uh-huh. Not having this, the tools to be able to deal with that grief or that loss. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So as we are rounding up, Laurie, if you, our listeners could do one thing after listening to you and Rusty's story, what would you want them to take away? Well, I actually think it was a point that you made, Tope, with um, get that relationship solid in, in your relationship with Jesus <clears throat> on solid ground and grow it and, and have it deep. Because when that storm hits, you're going to need an anchor. And he's our anchor. And so he's our hope. And be ready for it. And it'll make it a lot easier to get through. Well, it won't always be so easy, but, you know, we always, there's always hope in the ruins. Mm-hmm. And yes. um, <laughs> we, we have that if we just um, have that foundation in our lives. And that foundation is Jesus. It really is. Mm-hmm. That, that hope and the foundation uh, is in Jesus and having that relationship, like you said, is essential if we're to uh, weather the storms well and if we're going to tap into those treasures. So, Laurie, thank you again for uh, joining us today and for sharing your story. Where can people uh, reach you? Where can they find you? I am at lauriboroff.com. It's L-O-R-I-B-O-R-U-F-F.com. That's where you can find me and... uh, if I can ever offer any encouragement or coaching or anything like that to help you get through a hard time or get unstuck, um, you can email me at Lori at LoriBorff.com as well. Okay. Well, thank you again, Lori. It's been, it's been a pleasure to have you and uh, take care and God bless you. You too. Thank you for all you do, Tove. Love you. Thanks. <laughs>